It's that time of year again. The holidays are upon us. Santa! Oh my God! I know I'm getting ready. Soy to the world, let veganism come. If you're like most vegans, chances are you see the holidays differently than before you went vegan. Is Christmas even vegan? It's about Santa being pulled around by reindeer. Instead of just seeing it as a time to catch up with friends and family, you may now see it as a holiday centered around a meal that animals were needlessly killed for. Oh, it's very sucky! So what can we do? In this short video, I plan to share four steps to help us navigate what could be a challenging time of the year. This video isn't meant to have all the answers. We're all different people and have to find our own way to manage social situations. Step one is to manage our exposure. Some of us may be perfectly happy to sit around with others while they're eating non-vegan items, while others might be emotionally brought down by it. It's up to us to reflect on how these events may affect us so we can plan for them. For instance, you may like to go visit your family after they've finished eating. If they're open-minded, you might like to invite them to have a vegan meal. Step two is perhaps the most important, and that's the plan for our interactions. Group settings can be particularly difficult because we can feel ganged up on, and it's quite likely around the holidays that there's gonna be more than one other person that we're talking with. If people ask you about your veganism, chances are it's because they're curious. Even if it comes across as quite negative, there's still a chance that if we stay calm and assertive, we can turn it into a positive interaction. Does someone need a hug? It may help to have a one-liner ready to go to explain to your friends and family why you chose to be vegan. Your family may feel like nothing has changed except for you. That's why it's up to us to clearly communicate why we no longer choose to support animal use. The important thing here is to make this explanation personal to us. Was it a documentary or something you saw on social media that inspired you to be vegan? How did this make you feel? The answers to those questions are your one-liner. For instance, you could say, I watched the documentary Earthlings and it made me feel sad. And when I looked into it, I realized that animal use is completely unnecessary. We don't have to do it. So I chose to stop supporting it. When talking with others about veganism, there's four things I like to keep in mind. Repeat, praise, inform, and ask. By repeating, all I mean is paraphrasing what the person has said back to them so they feel heard and understood. Chances are, if they feel like you're listening to them, they're likely to return the favor. For example, if someone says they'd never be vegan because they don't want to have to give up cheese, you could say, it sounds like you're concerned you might not be able to experience some of the same flavors if you went vegan. You could then talk about how once you understood the ethics behind veganism, the subtle differences in flavors were much less important, and that rather than being a limitation, it's actually been a joy to try new foods. Praising means positively reinforcing those good things you hear in the conversation. I promise they're there. There's room for everyone on the nice list. For instance, if someone says they're vegetarian, saying, that's great, what inspired you to do that? And then asking them, have you considered veganism? The informed step is our opportunity to build awareness. I found the best way to do this is by using I statements. For instance, I was shocked to learn what happens to male offspring in the dairy and egg industries. The final ask step is where things get exciting. This is where we ask open-ended questions to get the person thinking about veganism. A couple of my favorites at the moment are, do you think animals experience emotions such as happiness? And do you think when we kill them, we violate their right to experience future happiness? If the conversation starts getting lost in facts and figures, take a step back and simply ask them, when it comes to animal use, what does your heart say? I also like to be strategic about my word choice. Instead of saying, why aren't you doing this? I like to say, I chose to stop supporting these industries and here's why. Saying we or us can also help to build common ground, such as we've been tricked into thinking these industries are necessary. Now I like to focus my interactions around the ethics of veganism. If someone doesn't think we can be healthy without using animals, I like to point out that animals get their nutrients from plants. So why not go directly to the source and eat the plants versus filtering our nutrients through someone else? If the person expresses interest in the environment, Cowspiracy is a great documentary to refer them to. You may even have some downtime to watch your favorite documentary together. On that point, if you're not sure what gifts to ask for for the holidays, why not ask friends and family to watch one of your favorite documentaries with you? You may have a favorite animal sanctuary that they could donate to in your name. There's also a plethora of great books on veganpublishers.com, including Santa's First Vegan Christmas. 
If we think we might lose our cool with friends and family, it may pay to think ahead of time some of the things they might say that could trigger us. That way we'll be more prepared when we hear them. It also helps me to think about who I'm advocating for, the animals, and what's the best possible thing I can say for them. Step three is to manage expectations. It's not up to us to get our friends or family to choose veganism because of one interaction we had with them at the holidays. If the topic of veganism comes up, it's quite likely that the interaction seems quite neutral or perhaps even negative. If we can keep things positive and get people thinking, that's the best thing we can do. Our goal is to create a supportive environment to help people explore their curiosity about veganism. Step four and the final step is to take care of ourselves. It may pay to set aside some extra time during the holidays for self-care. You may like to meditate, exercise, or get outside. Whatever we normally do to recharge our vegan batteries, we may wanna do a little bit more of during this potentially stressful time. This time of year is meant to help us recharge our batteries, and we can't do this if we're putting ourselves in situations that drain us. Remember, we create our own social worlds. If we surround ourselves by positive and emotionally healthy people, we're more likely to be positive and emotionally healthy ourselves. I just like to smile. Smiling's my favorite. We might find that spending some time with people outside of our biological family helps us with this. Do you have any strategies that you use to navigate the holidays? Let us know in the comments. And if you know someone who you think might benefit from watching this, please share. Happy holidays, everyone. You may now see it as a holiday centered around a meal that animals will need. You want to get involved, eh, Dexter? Dog coughing. For instance, if someone says they're vegetarian, Definitely need to edit that out. <laughs>